So I've been getting into modular synthesizers, I am afraid to admit. Uh, so far I've been holding myself to a rule that I can only buy DIY kits, because that keeps the price down quite a bit. And it's actually been quite a bit of fun. Um, it's been a long time since I've done a lot of electronic stuff, so it's been pretty fun brushing up on my soldering skills and just having a couple hours to, to put these kits together. But it's got me thinking, well, what can I make without a kit? I used to sell a couple electronics kits, and one of them was this servo controller system. Just a simple little circuit based on the 555 timer. Um, as you can tell by the number of circuit boards left over, it was never a big seller. But I do have a lot of stuff left over from it, including, of course, some 555 chips. So, why don't I work on making a clock module? So the first thing I'm going to need is power. Um, your rack modules run at plus and minus 12 volts, I want, and ground, and I want plus 5 volts. Um, so I have my power supply here set up to give 12 volts. I just need to get that down to 5 for working inside the circuit. So I was digging through my parts bin and I don't have a simple 5 volt voltage regulator, unfortunately. But I do have this variable regulator in some terribly obscene looking monstrosity of an old project. Um, I think this was a laptop battery case and I was trying to power it off of an external 12 volt battery. Um, I don't even remember if it worked. This was like 20 years ago. So I'm going to pull this out of here um, and the capacitors are still what I want. Um, this is set up for like 6.3 volts or something. So I need to vary some of these resistor values to get it down to 12. 5 volts output. Pretty simple little circuit. I just made the dumb mistake of reversing those two resistors and that confused me for a while. But yeah, now this is working and we can start uh, wiring up the 555. This ended up taking me longer than I expected. I had to dig through all of my spare electronics to find the capacitors I needed. I've got a bunch, but these are all done in the picofarad range and weren't helpful. And it turns out I don't have that many around 10, 20 microfarads as I needed. But I finally put something together. So here it is. Basic 555 circuit. I'm using this 250k ohm potentiometer. Um, it's not the one I would have chosen, but it's the highest uh, value one I have and that ended up being necessary. So if we look up on the scope here, uh, this is the output right now uh, between 0 and about 5 volts. A little bit under 5 volts, but that's fine. And now if I turn the potentiometer, we can slow it down, and it goes down to about a third of a hertz, so around 20 beats per minute, which is on the slow end, and it'll go all the way up to like 68 hertz or something, uh, which is well outside <laughs> what I'd want to use musically, but it'll work. I'll just have to be a bit more careful with the potentiometer. So now that I have this, I can get into why I wanted 5 volts, because I also found this in my old parts. A binary counter. This, like, it's so old that the adhesive has failed, spontaneously failed on that. I'm pretty sure I bought this in the U District Radio Shack around 1998. Um, I actually did a couple of the projects at the time with these. They're pretty cool. You just send in a signal, and then a bunch of these pins out are counting that digit in binary. So if you send it a clock signal, you're getting a clock divider here. Um, there is the slight complication that this is triggering on high to low um, when most of the, uh, you know, a drum sequencer or something is going to trigger on low to high. That's when it would actually fire the sound, while this is going to only count up next time. So either that'll get you a backbeat, or I can just sacrifice one pin and have that be my one. Um, there's no reason that the one of this has to be the one of this, and since this is going so fast, um, half of that, or even a quarter of that, will be fine. I can modify that until I find um, a nice bass tempo. Here it is running. That's the binary counter. Here are the outputs. I'd forgotten on this model there isn't the first place. It actually skips from Q0 to Q3. So it actually skips two steps in there. So, and that's fine. 
like there's no reason I have to use the base one as the actual primary output of the clock. It could be this Q3 pin. Um, but that did mean that I wanted to it to be able to go faster. Um, you know, 200 BPM is an upper aim. I definitely want it to be able to at least get to that. So I have changed around this capacitor. It's now one microfarad instead of 10. I've changed the resistance, the uh, R1, uh, and I switched to this different potentiometer, a slider, which is what actually I wanted to originally use. But this just goes up to 25 kilo ohms instead of 250. But um, it now works okay. So this is on the slow end, which is still a bit fast there, but I'll put out all these pins. So if I want even slower, I can just take one of these down here. That's fine. And if I now move the pot up towards zero ohms, this gets very, very fast indeed. Faster than I would ever likely use it, of course. That's getting up into audio frequencies there, but that might be fun to play with. So I think I'm going to go with this layout. Um, it'll just be a weird, quirky, home-built clock, and that's just fine. Okay, I've now converted from this messy prototype, drawn out what I ended up making. Hopefully this is correct. So now I need to convert that to a more permanent form on these breakout boards. Here it is running. Took a bit longer than I would have liked, but uh, it seems to work. So obviously this part is still temporary. Um, next I need to make the case mounting for it with to hold the uh, output sockets and mount the slide pod on.
And there it is, my first custom Eurorack module. Unfortunately, the case and power supply still hasn't shown up, so I can't demonstrate it properly. But uh, I think it came out okay. The wiring, meh, you know, whatever. Um, I was a bit disappointed with the label. I need to get more practice applying the vinyl. It's it's really fiddly on small stuff like that, but it's not bad. Um, probably should have just created a stencil and spray painted it though. I love the faceplate overall though. Um, pretty fun to get to do a little milling on a project like this. And yeah, came out pretty good, I think. Let's uh, hook it up to the power and see how it works. Here it is running on just benchtop power supply, just uh, bridged in. And yeah, it works okay. So each each light and each jack as you go down um, is a power of two less. So if you want to think of this as whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth, sixteenths, you can. I'm wondering if operation, if maybe I won't be thinking of the middle one as the primary, um, and then I'll have powers of two available on both sides for different uses, we'll see. And then you can adjust it with the slide pot. So you slide this all the way down, it gets very slow indeed particularly if you're looking at the whole notes over here, and then slide it the other direction, and it gets very, very fast, way up into audio frequencies, which might actually be fun to play with. That's a nice auxiliary square wave output. So hopefully my case and power supply show up soon, and I can uh, show it to you actually in use. Stay safe, everyone. No, I couldn't let that label stand. No.